Welcome back to part two of masteringinlogic.com's overview and lesson on using Logic Pro X 10.4's new multi effects plugins. In this series, you'll learn what these plugins are about and I'll give you some ideas as to how you can effectively use them in your own music, whatever style you produce. So in the last video, I mentioned the new multi effects, which consists of the fat effects and the step effects resurrected by Apple from Camel Audio and now part of Logic Pro X 10.4. In the last lesson, we looked in depth at the fat effects. So this time, let's take a look at the step effects. Let's dive in. So the step effects is a powerful multi effect unit that provides modulation control with three different step modulators. The plugin is geared towards adding rhythmical color to your music, so it's probably aimed at dance floors. But that being said, you're going to find a whole ton of uses on all manner of sound sources. You can actually use this simply as an effects processor, but it comes into its own with the three step modulators, offering 128 steps that can control any of the plugins parameters, gate and pan. You even get an envelope with each step modulator to boot. Similar to the fat effects, the plugin is split into four sections, the modules, an XY pad and the powerful step modulators. And all that feeds in series to the effects chain where you can change the order of effects. So how do you go about using this plugin? I want to show you how it can drastically change the sound of even the simplest synth patches by using an untreated waveform from the ESP. I'll also show you how the plugin can be used in combination with the fat effects to take a simple electronic track with only a few elements and make it sound more like a record. First off, let's look at actually using the step effects. The step effects has five effects processors or modules, which can be switched on and off with the on and off switch. The dials control typical elements such as rate, cutoff, depth, and so on. And you can use those to shape the sound and affect the sound source. There's also some drop down menus which provide further control and tone shaping options for the individual modules. The power of the plugin though lies in the step modulator section and is really where all the fun lies. So let's take a look at this section specifically. On the left is the three independent step modulators which are enabled with the on off button and you can also click to highlight the modulator you want to work with. To get started and to experiment, there's a drop down menu with factory presets ready to go. You can simply select the different presets and you'll instantly hear the plugin working. If you want to program your own sequences, it's actually pretty easy. All you do is select a target source from the left hand side drop down menu, selecting a target module that you want to modulate, a filter for example. Then using the depth, rate and swing dials, you can determine the rhythm and amount of processing that will take place. The greater the depth, the greater the modulation. So let's set this up as a demonstration. I'm going to target the filter cutoff and turn the cutoff in the module down to zero. This will allow me to select the depth amount, which is plus 100%, and therefore will control how much the filter will be opened by the step modulator. I'm turning the rate down to one whole note so that you can clearly hear how each step sounds in sequence. Swing, I'll leave that set to zero. Next, I want to decide how many steps will take place. And you do that by grabbing the handle in the display area and dragging it to the left or right. I'm going to set this to just four steps. So far, what we have sounds like this. Okay, so simple filtering. The reason I've set this to one whole note is because I want to show you the impact the envelope has on each individual step. To the right of the display area, there is the envelope display, which consists of attack, hold and release. 
Each individual step cycles through attack, hold, and finally the release. And you can control how long each phase will last by dragging the envelope nodes around. For example, setting the attack to 100% will result in the step fading in and immediately dropping back to zero. Setting the attack to 50% and release to 50% will see each step smoothly fading in and out as the filter sweeps up and down. But I can go one further. I can drag the steps to the left to shorten their length and even reduce the height to change the depth amount, which ultimately changes the filter amount. Check it out. Lastly, I can tie steps together, either by dragging the step to the right, tying them together, or clicking in between the step numbers. You'll see a horizontal dash that will tie them together. When steps are tied, the envelope is equal to the length of the tie, but the hold will be lengthened until the release phase is reached. Let me show you what I mean. So that's the basics of the step sequencer. You'll find the envelope, tie, and amount functions will greatly affect the sound and play a big role in each individual step. Of course, the module settings and drop-down selections you make in combination with the three step modulators will provide limitless scope for changing your sounds. So let's see how a simple chord and an 80-sounding Nintendo game melody can be dramatically changed by the step sequencer. Okay, so now I want to show you how a whole track can be dramatically changed by combining both the step and fat effects. So I've got a track with a few instruments, drums, bass, two keys, that are simply playing one chord and a lead line. All the software instruments are stock sounds mainly from Logic. I've used some sounds from Nexus and Native Instruments, but they are simply standard waveforms, nothing special. Here's what they sound like. And here's what it sounds like with the fat and step effects. As you can hear, there's a massive difference and the ability to shape sound with these two plugins alone is going to give you so much control and power over the sound of your music. So I hope you found this lesson helpful and has provided you with a few ideas for getting started with this amazing plugin. There's lots more I could discuss, but I'm sure this will give you enough to get started. Thanks for watching. If you're interested in learning how to master your own music using Logic Pro X, check out my site masteringinlogic.com. Thanks again and happy mixing and mastering.